Good morning, everyone. It's time for devotions. Yes, and it's so wonderful for me to be with you this morning, just to come and spend a little bit of time delving into the Word of God and just being in your company. What a wonderful time it is for me to be in your homes and as we together praise and worship Almighty God. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus this morning. And yes, it is coolish, but I'm sure the Spirit of God will keep us warm. Let us commence our devotions this morning just by praying together. So come, let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, we greet you this morning, Lord, as we move into your presence, as we gather this morning just to hear your word to us, as we worship you and as we praise you, Lord. O oh Lord, we approach your throne this morning just wanting to say thank you, Lord, for the beautiful morning you've given to us. A bright sunny sky and the sun is shining. Thank you, Lord, that we are able to witness that. Thank you that we are able to come to you and praise you and thank you. But thank you, Lord, that we were able to open our eyes and know that we are alive and that we are well, Lord. Oh yes, Lord, some of us have a few ailments, but Lord, it's nothing too big for you. So we thank you that you are with us today. Oh Lord, as we gather in your name, we pray that you will just bless us, that you will touch us, Lord, with your mighty hand, and that we will just be blessed by our gathering today. So, Father, we pray and we thank you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Isaiah chapter 6 and I'm reading the first eight verses. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings, with two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among the people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Yeremiah, send me. Folks, this is a very special text to me, because when God called me into the ministry, this is the text that I received. And truly I said, Here I am, use me. But just looking at the history of this text and just looking at it a little bit, this is the call of Isaiah into the ministry. And I don't know how many of us know this, but there were three Isaiahs that wrote the book of Isaiah. And it was done over a period of 760 years. This is the period where the Israelites or God's people were not very obedient and not very faithful. And God calls Isaiah to take God's message to them. But the message he has to take to them in the, the first part of Isaiah is not a good one. It's a, it's a warning. A warning to them that they turn away from their sin and that they become faithful. And that they listen to the Lord and that they do what the Lord is calling them to do. The first part of Isaiah is what we call pre-exilic. It's before they, they get taken into exile. The second part is known as the exilic period, the period where they were in exile. And then, of course, the latter part of 
Isaiah is post-exilic. But Isaiah gets called to do a horrible job. Well, which we think is a horrible job. And he has to go to God's people and he has to warn them and tell them that they must stop sinning, they must stop doing what they're doing, and they must live their lives according to what God wants them to live. The people were not listening to God's commands, and there was a lot of hardship. And they were going to go into even greater hardship when the time came for them to go into exile, because then they will be oppressed by the Babylonians. So they have to then basically listen to a word that's going to pull them back into order. And it's a stern warning. Very often I, I look around the world and I see the heart sore. I see the tears. I see the hardship. I see the segregation, I see the murder, I see the, the rapes, I see the gender-based violence, I see the ugliness that is in people. And then I wonder, where is God's people? Why are they not there trying to help God and restore order? You know, people who are Christians believe that we become Christians and we can just sit back and we don't have to do anything. But that is not true because God has called each and every one of us to make a difference in the lives of people. You may say to me, John, but what, what difference can I make? I'm one amongst thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions even. So what difference can I make? And it leads me to the, the story. You know, every year on the west coast of South Africa, you have the crayfish that walk out of the sea. They walk out onto the beaches. And that's normally with the coming of red tide. But what they don't realize is, is when they walk out onto the beaches, they are doomed. They're going to die. And one day there was a colored guy walking on the beaches and he was taking them one by one and putting them back into the sea. And a person stopped by him and said, what are you doing? You surely cannot make any difference. Look how many thousands of crayfish are laying here on the beach. You'll never get them all back into the sea. And he responded and he said, I might not get all these thousands back into the sea. But to those that I'm able to pick up and put in the sea, I have made a difference in their life. So you see, no matter whether we, we get to the millions of saving the world, but if we get to speak to one person and just go in the name of the Lord and bring the wonderful salvation and grace that God has, to them and showing it to them and loving them and saying to them that there is hope, hope in Jesus Christ. There is hope in the Almighty God that we will be reconciled to Him. We will make the difference in that one person's life. God wants everybody back in His fold. There's a word for that. They call it the universality of Christianity. In other words, it's universal. It's for everybody to come back. And that is what God wants. And He wants to use us. And that is why He calls us to make the difference in each person's life. And it's not whether you are equipped or not equipped or whether you are a sinner. We said we read today how Isaiah says, I'm a man of unclean lips. In other words, I'm a sinner and I speak things that are not right. And the seraphim, that is a heavenly creature with six wings, picked up a coal that was hot with tongues. And he touched Isaiah's lips. And he says, the Lord has forgiven you and you have been atoned for. And you are ready to go 
in the service of God. You know, God calls each and every one of us. But we turn a deaf ear. Instead of being like Isaiah saying, Here I am, Lord. Take me and use me. You remember Aaron and Moses? Moses said, Lord, I cannot speak. How come you taking me to the Pharaoh? And God says, I'll send your brother Aaron. And Moses says, If you lead, I will go, Lord. And so did Isaiah. If you lead me, I will go. So I want to ask you this morning. Have you made yourself available for God? To serve Him and to work for Him? And to introduce Him to people? Again, I say this and I've said this a lot. Nobody is expecting you to stand on the street corner shouting out the gospel. No. But when you have the... When you have this circumstance and the situation and the context where God touches and sets the scene, let him use you. Become his disciple. Amen. Come, let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, we've heard your word to us this morning, Lord. And yes, Lord, it's one of those messages where we we are so afraid and we are so scared to go out into the world and introduce you to all the people, Lord. Because, Lord, we don't always understand how the Holy Spirit works. And this morning we want to say to you that use us, Lord, but help us to know what it is that we must do. That through your Holy Spirit you will grant us the wisdom to understand your ministry to us. We may understand our ministry that you've called us into being. Lord, once we understand, we will know, Lord, that when you call, we will go, and that it is to the, the betterment of your kingdom and to the building of your kingdom. Oh, Lord, let us go gladly, and that when you say, whom shall I send, we will respond in saying, here I am, Lord, send me, I will go. Oh Lord, and when you do call us, let your Holy Spirit prompt us so that we may know it's you and that we will not go against your word, but rather that we will follow you, Lord. Oh Lord, help us with this in our lives so that truly the world may see us and the tears of the people may be taken away by you that you will bring a peace and a comfort to this world and that you will use us to make that difference. So, Father, we pray in the name above all names, the names of Jesus Christ. Amen. Folks, we're going to sing a song now that brings all our praise to the Lord. But this song is a special song because it's a song, a song specifically written for this Bible reading we had today. The title of the song is I the Lord of Sea and Sky. And it's based on Isaiah 6 verse 8. Here I am Lord. Is it I Lord? So join together in singing. Yeah where I am in Johannesburg. I want to hear you singing down there in Cape Town. So join together and enjoy praising the Lord.
With the end of that song, folks, it also brings an end to our devotions for the morning. As I'm about to leave just again, I want to say thank you for sharing this time with me. Thank you for listening to me. I truly hope and trust and pray that the Lord touched you this morning. And yes, until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy. Always remember that the Lord Jesus is there for you. So until we meet again, goodbye now.